When I speak about Apple products on this channel, I always feel like I have to justify my comments by saying that I'm not a typical Apple fanboy. I have used some Apple products in the past and currently do own and use an iPad, iPhone, and MacBook Air, despite being a pretty dedicated Linux user for my everyday computer needs. That said, I am rather impressed by the new M4 Mac Mini. I did own an M1 Mac Mini myself, but sold it to purchase the previously mentioned MacBook Air, also an M1 model. I was impressed by that older Mac Mini as being a well-made, very capable and quiet PC in a small form factor. Previous Mac Minis were also a good value for an Apple product, a company that frankly enjoys extracting premium prices for their products whenever possible. So, the new model comes in an even smaller form factor and features the latest M4 version of Apple Silicon. Also, I believe all the newly announced Apple computers now feature 16GB of RAM as standard, mostly in service of the forthcoming Apple Intelligence AI products. It's about time, as up until earlier this year, Apple kept insisting that 8GB was fine because of their superior architecture. They would also charge an arm and a leg if you wanted or needed a system with additional RAM. So, what do you get for the money? Well, for $599 in the US, you get an M4 Mac Mini with 16 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD. You supply a monitor, keyboard, and mouse, which is something you should bear in mind of shopping around. If you currently have a monitor, it would require HDMI support, and while you can use just about any USB or wireless keyboard and mouse, it would make more sense to use either actual Apple products or at least compatible third-party products that mimic the Apple keyboard layout. If you didn't know, Apple keyboards are laid out a little differently from a standard Windows-compatible keyboard. For an extra $200, you can get a 512 gig SSD, which probably makes sense if you can afford it. In 2024, the default 256 gigs of storage is pretty stingy, even though Windows 11 has higher storage requirements than Mac OS. You could add some extra storage more cheaply to the Mac Mini by using an external SSD, but that might require a bit of discipline on your part when arranging what is stored where on your system. The base model M4 Mac Mini is supposedly more performant than the previous M3 Pro version. Again, if you were not aware, Apple tends to release their current ARM-based chipsets as M1, M2, M3, etc., and each of these usually has a base version, a Pro version, and a Max, or sometimes even an Ultra Max version. Each of these designations increases the core count of the CPU and or the integrated GPU, and thus increases the performance. The new Mac form factor is very small, about the size of an Apple TV or a Roku Ultra streaming device, although a little taller. It apparently does have a fan, and the cooling is done via slots on the bottom of the device, so it would be important to place this on a hard surface so it can breathe, so to speak. It does have quite a good selection of ports, including two front-mounted ones which are more convenient for quick connection, disconnection of devices. There's also an oddly bottom-mounted on-off switch. Apple has to have at least one quirky thing, I guess. I'll be curious to see if there are any heat concerns once people start using these in the real world. Even though Apple Silicon does tend to use less power and generate less heat than other types of CPUs, it is a very small case being asked to support a quite powerful computer. The few hands-on reviews I have seen have been very positive, and not all from hardcore Apple fans, and as I said, it does appear to be a good value, especially for an Apple product, which are generally well made and long-lasting if the used products I own are any indication. The only possible caveat, apart from the skimpy storage and the need to supply your own monitor, etc., is that, of course, it uses Apple Mac OS. Coming from Windows or even Linux, Mac OS can at first seem, if not jarring, at least mm, quirky. Things work a little differently, some stuff is not where you might expect it to be, and software installation, while not difficult, is decidedly different, and so on. On that front, though, there are many YouTube videos of enthusiastic Mac users helping Windows users into the fold so there's no shortage of help. I'll put links below as usual. One other interesting thing to note that is a few of the older MacBook Air and MacBook Pro models are now being sold with 16 gigs of RAM as standard instead of 8 gig. This might be something to look out for as it's effectively a free RAM upgrade. I would say if you're looking for a quiet, powerful, small form factor computer and don't mind getting pulled into the Apple ecosystem, then the M4 Mac Mini is absolutely worth a look.
If you're a hardcore gamer, bear in mind that Apple's gaming support falls short of Windows, so that may be a concern for you. Otherwise, Macs are very capable in most areas of computing and can definitely be a daily driver for most users. As always, thank you for watching, take care, and we'll catch you next time. Bye.